Hello everyone, my name is Chad Rushler and I'm from HandySharp.com and I'm in the kitchen today but I'm not planning on doing any cooking. I wanted to take this opportunity to address some questions that we get from time to time about what are the different sharpening models that HandySharp represents today. What is the difference between the V sharpener versus the straight piece? And uh, a few of them have a bonus inside the handle that you may not be aware of. So let's take an opportunity to show you the, how they work and uh, show you the surprise in the handle. And uh, let's get started on that, shall we? I grabbed a, an example of each of the sharpeners that we've got represented today at Handy Sharp. And let's just start by name, give you some basic features about them. This is the round, in other words, uh, another name for it is the poker chip. I like to call it the little cutie. It's got a keychain version here. More importantly, it has a hardened tungsten carbide piece here, which is the common piece of all the sharpeners. This is the same size, same piece, just different shaped handles. This is the most compact one, fits in your pocket, goes anywhere kind of a sharpener. Okay, we've got another one here, next size up, so to speak. This is the rectangle. The rectangle also has a large straight tungsten carbide piece. It also has a V sharpener in this little spot right here. V sharpeners are good for kitchen knives and pocket knives, utility knives, that sort of thing. I can explain more if you get into it. This also has a keychain. It's rather compact and fits into your pocket. This one right here is uh, probably the most common one that's out there that's known probably. It's a long handle version. It's gotten the most popularity I would say. Uh, some of these others have gained some popularity some, because of some of the other features, and I can explain those in just a moment. It also has a large tungsten carbide piece, V sharpener on this end right here. It's long, it helps with your reach, it helps if you've got limitations with arthritis or whatnot, and it's not all about finger pressure like the little one requires. This can be more in your hand if you needed to hold it in a different way, so there's some benefits there. These other ones right here, they got round handles. This may not be that obvious to see right here. This this character, they look like cousins, so to speak. The difference here is this one has a keychain. The long handle has a hole here to be able to tie a lanyard or a keychain or something on. But this comes with a keychain. It's got a bottle opener in the end here so that you can open your favorite beverage. It also has a V sharpener and the large straight tungsten carbide piece. The little one here is just a smaller version of the, this is called the, uh, by the way, this is called the uh, Sharpen Spark. And this one is the Sharpen Spark Mini. It's just a little bit, obviously it's just a little bit shorter than the other one. It's about an inch and a half lesser in length. It fits more in your pockets. Convenient that way. It also has the bottle opener, the V sharpener, and the large tungsten carbide straight piece. This one over here, this is the Survival Sharpened Fire. The black end on this one has a signal whistle. This is more of a survival tool, brighter color, bigger tool, obviously. Uh, v sharpener, the large carbide. The other end of this one threads off. It's got a hollow cavity, a good place to store some tinder or some fish hooks and line, that sort of thing. Maybe stick matches as a backup would be a good option. Maybe some medication if you're keeping this as an emergency tool. What's un unique in the handle of each of these three round handled ones with the black tips is all three of them contain a ferrocium rod. And ferrocium, it's a fire starter. This is flint and magnesium blended together. It's called ferrocium. Sometimes you'll hear the nickname ferro rod. And a ferro rod with that flint and here's your steel, that's your spark, and the magnesium gives it an afterburn, so to speak. So, so in other words, it on a little paper there just to show you that you can take this initially it's got some black ox uh, oxidize on the on the rod it scratch, scratches off rather easily so once you get that out of the way then you get into the material that, that actually does the sparking and you can see how that wants to get going in that way so here's a good way to really light a fire we'll do another video where we get more in detail but my suggestion is you put the rod down so that it's not sliding around that way you can peel some of these, some of this material off, get a little collection here at the base, and then a little bit faster, you turn around and you light that up. You can see how that wants to, that wants to st start and burn like a sparkler. So that's what's going on. That's the surprise in the handle. That's the, the ferrocium rod. All the rods are the same size. 
that didn't change just the handle that goes around them is the difference there uh, so there's some benefits there if you could use a sharpener with a fire starter for your emergency gear glove box of your car out in your snowmobile you know variety of different places to put it real quickly here I'll just show you how the sharpener works the large carbide piece here has got a couple of edges 90 degree corners or edges on each side of that they won't cut yet it's not that kind of sharpness a good way to sharpen your blade and find the angle of it is to hold it in such a way that you can actually see the shine the reflection in other words along the slope or the bevel of that blade so I like to just hold it I got a lot of light here in the kitchen I got a nice bright surface here as I tip it it goes right around the edge and off the tip of the knife so that becomes kind of the the focal point or the target or in other words that's the surface that I want to concentrate on laying that edge of that carbide on the slope or the flat of that bevel so that we can match that bevel angle and then just brush stroke down this blade you don't want to push real hard you're not trying to gouge it you're not trying to take metal off your blade sometimes you may just be straightening the steel in order to get a good edge back on it other times with a little more pressure and softer steel realistically you could be cutting some metal off that knife and that may be what is required depending on what kind of a tool or blade that you're sharpening so as I'm talking here I'm, I'm just kind of practice what I preach here I'm just following the bevel on that blade do it one side do the other maybe spend a little more time right up here on the tip come around spend some more time on the tip on the other side of that blade quick way to check it go right across the top don't go down it you'll be wearing a band-aid otherwise go across the top if you feel a little bite against your skin you can tell that you're getting a little bit of an edge there in another video I went in more detail about being able to scratch and get a little thumbnail off your blade which is another indicator that your knife's rather sharp and then once you got it in that condition real light pressure a little steeper on the blade and, and any of the sharpeners they work they're, they're all they're all the same method it's all rather light pressure and you simply hone or deburr or take the wire edge off the blade the v sharpener that's in all of them except the little one doesn't have the v the rest of these do the vent of it to the v a few things if you don't know how to sharpen a blade and you need to get an edge on your knife a v sharpener is a good option and how you use it is you simply just put your blade right in the center of that v shape and you just slide your knife through it several times maybe several dozen times with light to medium pressure i just like to put about as much pressure in the v as to feel some resistance on the blade as i slide it through it and i like to concentrate on taking that blade from the heel or of this end in other words all the way through turn the knife and kind of flip the tip through that v shape so that you can get a hundred percent of that blade through that v profile it sharpens both sides of your knife at the same time and notice i've got it close to the edge of the table here i'm not pushing real hard you want to be perpendicular or straight into that v shape in a couple of ways you don't lean it from this side and then back over there you're gonna you're gonna create an angle or a, or a bluntness to your bevel so you really want to be in the center so it's not complicated you know try not to make too much complication out of it just realize I want to be in the center light to medium pressure and slide your blade through it I did want to point out that the reason I'm close to the countertop versus out here is what we don't want to do is hit the counter okay or the cutting board or the bumper of your truck or wherever you're sharpening your tool at because you can hear that hitting so if your sharpener is out here away from the edge and you don't want to hit a lot of times you're not doing a very good sharpening because you're more concerned about keeping the end of the knife from hitting the surface that the sharpener is laying on and rather than hold it up here in the air and do it people have the tendency to push a little bit harder than is necessary and they get these start and stop spots in the blade and that's not a good idea so if you get it close to the edge you put, place your blade in there you got plenty of clearance out here in the room the knife's not going to hit anything so you can concentrate more on good steady pressure several times through the v until the blade gets good and sharp 
and you're you're not going to hit anything you can concentrate on doing a better job okay and all the sharpeners work exactly the same way the V is the same profile by the way it's 22 degree angle that's a good average angle for kitchen knives and pocket knives and fillet knives and parry knives and kitchen cutlery in other words and uh, you can put a heck of an edge on your blade I mean you you run it through the V until that blade's good and sharp. If that's too sharp for you, then, then stop before you get to that point. Uh, otherwise, if you need a good edge on your blade, you can simply you can simply do it. And that's the goal, sharpen the blade. Okay. So hopefully that answers some questions. We can talk more about these things later. And uh, my name again is Chad Russler with HandySharp.com. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.